I would like to dedicate this uh, new lecture on uh, astrology, on French astrology, by uh, approaching the question, addressing the question of the relationship between language and astrology. This is not an easy task, apparently. We know that the astrologer talks a lot, that he has to express the astrological knowledge in plain words, in the words of science. But we don't exactly understand the connection between language and astrology. First of all, I would like to remind you a certain number of my conclusions, which are that we are, uh, with astrology and language, two structures which are both of them uh, in crisis. I always believe that language was a knowledge which was in a way perverted, which had lost its authority and which has become just a, a medium to express whatever you want to express. And it's more or less the case of astrology. So they, during this last month, I, I was approaching the truth I'm going to uh, deliver today. That is, that language originally, and I think most people have a wrong representation of what is language and that it has an influence upon their approach to astrology. Language originally is a knowledge. And this knowledge is in fact astrology. Or if you prefer, cycles. I would say things plainly, because I don't want to dedicate too much time to this. Astrology tells us, if you accept the idea of duality, of cycles, of periods, that each period has its own language, its own words, its own definition, right? So the idea of connecting a certain type of vocabulary to a certain period of time is not absurd at all. So if you accept this idea, you can accept probably the fact that originally the language was connected with cycles and that there were words which were made for this part, this period of the cycle and other words which were connected with another period of the cycle. But when the cycle system has, if we are in, in a way, exploded or imploded, then language was just <laughs> uh, free of doing anything and lost its consciousness and lost its ex reason of existence. In a way. So it has just become a medium and not anymore a message. Heindel, at the beginning of the 20th century, called one of his books The Message of the Stars, something like that. It was Danish. And in fact, astrology has a message which is supposed to express itself through words, both like that is through languages. But uh, the problem is that the basic cycle of astrology has been lost. The key of the astrology has been lost. And therefore, the whole system, cycle, astrology, language, is disrupted. That is the point. And we intend, in the next month, to publish books on this subject of the connections between astrology, cycles, language, semantics, grammar, etc. And it will include also the question of the, gen the gender studies. Because the gender studies 
a gusto, a, a, a signification uh, concerning linguistics. We have feminine, uh, feminine and masculine are also words which belong to the linguistic terminology, to the malignity vocabulary, in most languages at least. And uh, um, we know, well, you know probably if you listen to my lessons, that uh, I give a certain role to women in the cycles, and there is a cycle which is more favorable, there is a phase, a period which is more favorable to women, and a phase which is more favorable to men, etc. So, there is here a triptych, a triptych, a trilogy, uh, linguistics, cycles, planetary cycles, and genders. And this is the connection between three knowledges which are very badly treated today and which are nearly uh, forgotten. Uh, astrology is not considered a serious thing. Linguistics is just a study of mediums. And genders is something which is just a, a construction, uh, a social construction which has no real basis. And I want, on the contrary, to privilege these three levels, these three knowledges, these three uh, sciences, which today seem not totally uh, outside the major line that humanity should follow, which is a major mistake, really. So. Uh, I will give you a very simple example uh, about the cyclical nature of languages. Of languages. Uh, in French and English, or, and probably also in Latin languages. Let's just consider two prefixes. One is RE, and the other one is DE. Vice difference. I return, re means turning again. It comes from the French word rear, that you have in rear ward, rear window, uh, which means something which comes from the Latin retro. Yeah. So you, re you return to something, you remember, you refund. Well, there are hundreds of Verbs starting with RE and they correspond to one cycle, one phase of the cycle, which I call the Venusian phase. And there is another prefix which is called, which is DE or DIS, or, and which means that you leave something, departure, destroy, dismiss. Is function. So there is a dialectic between the RE and the DE. And this is already the basis of this duality of languages which has been ignored all the time. There is a language connected with the Venusian cycle, period, of Saturn, if you follow my work. And there is another group of words which is connected with the prefix D, which is Martian, which is to cut with the past, or to cut things into fragments and refuse the whole thing, the whole building, which is important also from death. In fact, when the body dies, has its every every part of the body has its own life. Okay. And um, that's what I want to say. I want to say that uh, the connection between linguistics and astrology is extremely inter interesting and that it will probably revolutionize at the same time linguistics and astrology and psychology. And uh, 
the women in this system are the basic point because without women we would not capture the signals of the sky. They have a special faculty in their subconscious system to know where the planets are and to react to the signals subconsciously. So the, the, what the women do has a considerable effect upon the movement of society and this is only about upon men. Uh, astrology is in a certain way I think a construction. It's not at all a discovery of a sort of universal law. I do not believe one second in that hypothesis and thesis. No, I believe that at a certain level, at a certain moment, astrology was created as a sort of architecture. And we say God is a great architect, a sort of architecture. And uh, it is a technical construction, a technical monument like the pyramids of like the Eiffel Tower, I don't know what. It is a mechanical system. And it is made to introduce this cyclicity, this structure of time, in the history of mankind. Which, of course, Darwin hasn't at all uh, appreciated. <laughs> uh, um, and it's probably explained by some sort of religious histories, some sort of religious legends like for instance the Genesis at the beginning of the Bible with the construction of Babel Tower, the, the appearance of the, the stars and the luminaries and etc. This is uh, the Elohim which creates mankind or whatever. But this has to do with what we say now. Um, so astrology is a great architecture, a great cathedral. Yeah? And it is the, its axis is Saturn, and it is divided into two times: Venus time, Mars time, and, it, and each time has its own language. And finally, we have this situation today, at the beginning of the 21st century, where language is not anymore considered as a knowledge when the, the inner knowledge of language is newly, totally uh, refused in a way, and astrology itself has lost its, its uh, fine, its, its center. It's not centered any longer, and it goes in a also the direction in a very anarchical way. This is also a problem. But when we, you can, we can restore for the next decade the real astrology and the real philosophy of language and the real philosophy 